Hello everyone and welcome to Creatures Features, the show where we discuss the strangest creatures in mythology, cryptozoology, and pop culture. My name is Aaron, your monstrologist for the day, and this is Jackie, who will be learning right alongside of all of you. Hello. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Doing pretty good. Uh, really enjoying reading up on the monster this week. Uh, got to listen to some tunes. I'm excited. That's. I don't know what that means, but I guess I'll find out. Yeah. Um, do you remember the hint? Uh, let's try to remember. I believe you said if your dog was a wolverine. Was that, that the hint? That's right. Okay. So uh, what's your guess based I, on I, that? I really don't know. My best guess, and this isn't even a good guess, that popped into mind was a chupacabra. I don't know why, and I don't think that's it. But that was all that I had come to mind. Wrong part of North America. <laughs> well, I was on the right continent, though, so I'll take it. Yeah, you were on the right landmass. I will, you know, that is better than I expected. Because you did tell me we were talking about a um, cryptid this time around. Yes, this is going to be our first cryptid hunt, uh, if it's you will. very exciting. Hunt from our own homes. That's right. Uh, you got quarantine. You got to stay safe. Yeah. While you look you for can, the cryptids. You can still hunt cryptids. You just got to do it story. while social distancing. Exactly. But uh, my hint was very misleading. That's fine. That's totally fine. So this week's cryptid... And our first American monster as well oh, yeah. is the Michigan Dogman. Okay, interesting. So have you ever heard of the Dogman before? I cannot... Oh, I see the Wolverine. Yeah, that is misleading. <laughs> uh, I, I just put it together. I cannot say this is one I am terribly familiar with. I do some... I've read up on some cryptids, but... Unless we get into this and it suddenly, like, sparks something. I don't believe so, no. Okay, so, um... What's your guess as to what this cryptid is all about? Um, well, <laughs> from my knowledge of cryptids, they're not particularly creatively named. Um, so I'm assuming we're talking about some... It probably depends. It's probably some sort of upright walking dog, because usually it's like a larger of the thing and upright. Definitely the head of probably a dog. But that's my best guess, because I feel like... I feel like it's a cryptid, so they're not, like... Despite them being mysterious, they're not mysteri mysteriously named. So you're pretty spot on right now. Like, Ooh, the Dogman the is more or less an upright dog with the body of a human, but the paws of a dog. Oh, okay. Got the paws. Nice. So hold on. Let me actually do this... Uh, let me get into the appearance here. Okay, let's do it, yeah. So usually the dog man stands at about seven feet tall, has the face of a wolf or a dog, body and posture of a man. Okay. In most cases, it doesn't have human hands, but instead keeps the dog, the dog paws, or like gotcha. a mixture of paws and hands. Right. They're usually spotted with a black or dark gray fur coat. And, like a lot of Bigfoot sightings, have a terrible smell associated with them. Yes, that is an interesting component to that. Um, I don't like the seven feet tall. Right away. That's too tall. <laughs> That's too tall. Um, okay. Interesting. I'm, I'm immediately intrigued by where these sightings have been, but I know we'll get to that, so we'll, we'll save that for later. But... So, um, speaking about that already, oh, okay, I want to let cool. you know Michigan Dogman is just because Michigan was where it was originally sighted. It has okay. been sighted outside of Michigan. Okay, cool. So we're talking like a general, like, north, northeast kind of... A Midwestern cryptid. Oh, Midwestern. Okay, cool. Yeah, there's yep. plenty of things out in cornfields you can see, so... Uh, also, fun fact, this Dogman kind of fits into that sort of European werewolf sort of vibe, just without the shifting... That's what that was my original thought of. Like, the, this sounds like a werewolf. So yeah, I'm intrigued to see how these like because I'm always fascinated by how uh, you know different cryptids line up with different things sighted different places. So I'm, I'm gonna be intrigued by that. But that makes sense. We just don't have the shape shifting portion of it. Okay. We don't have the shape shifting portion, and a lot of people do think that the dogman sightings are just mistaken Bigfoot sightings. You know, also two fair. large hairy animals. Yeah, I mean. Fair now, uh, I should ask before you, is it, like, whole body covered in fur? Like, it's got the posture of... Yeah, it's, like, full fur body. Okay, okay. We're not talking, so, like... So, like, think literally a wolf with more human proportions. Okay. I wanted to make sure... Standing in back feet. Okay, I wanted to make sure we were talking about, like... And I don't like this design for, like, 
Minotaurs, for example, but the older Minotaur, like the purest Minotaur, that's like just the head and then just like a dude with abs. I was yeah, it's just really got Frankenstein sewed on. I was gonna be really scared if that's what we were talking about, but okay, I, I think I have a pretty clear picture now. Yeah, no, very animalistic. Perfect. Um, along with the strange appearance, it also has a sort of strange behavior for the sightings oh. until very recently. Okay. So the odd behavior for its sightings is that it has been seen once a decade or appears for a certain year once a decade. Uh-huh. And That's... it's always on the seventh year of the decade. That is very interesting. Huh. Okay, so before we go on too much farther here, I've got something I'm going to show you. Okay. Which is actually our first, like, segue into a song portion. Oh, I'm not going to be able to play this for any of our people at home, unfortunately. Of course, of course. Because this is a copyrighted song. But uh, I'm going to leave the like link. link up, yeah. I've got two different versions of the link right down below. Both are official versions of the song that you can listen to on YouTube. Uh, I suggest you pause our however you're watching the video or the podcast yeah take a listen to this song and join us back here in a minute yeah okay so that song was written in 1997 by dj uh by michigan dj steve cook okay that was a very interesting experience it's it's a vibe it is it is but uh it was made and released on April 1st, 1997. <laughs> oh no. I don't know if April Fool's Day has anything to do with this, but oh no. It does, because oh. everything in this song, besides the very first sighting, uh-huh. Steve Cook made up. Gotcha. Yeah. Every single sighting that he had talked about in this song was made up. He just wanted to scare some people. I can't say I'm shocked, because other than the first sighting, all of them were vague as hell. <laughs> like, they were super vague. So I oh, can't say I'm they shocked. they really were. Yeah, it was like, there were claw marks on the door frame, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> Interesting, though. Okay. Kind of tried to, uh, like, war the worlds it. Oh, and... For a couple people, it worked. A few people were just scared and freaking out. Mm-hmm. But it I turned should... out the cook got a little more than he bargained for. When the radio station he worked for started getting calls, letters, reports of everyone in all sorts of communities around Michigan saying that they'd actually seen the dogmen and were too scared to talk about it okay. until they heard his song. Interesting. So it turned out that his song lined up with an actual creature that had been seen for decades. <laughs> so wait, 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 was the was the every ten years thing something he just made up? Yes. But then it kind of like that's terrifying. I don't like it that. Ki- everything that he said kind of lined up kind of with fit. everything else. Prophetic. So in the song he talks about the first sighting being in, being in 1887. Right, right, right. Uh, that is a year when a sighting did actually take place. Okay. And in reality, it wasn't a full logging camp, but just two lumberjacks who sighted okay. the creature. Gotcha. According to them, they saw the creature with the head of a dog and the body of a man. Uh, and there was no chasing around the creatures. Uh, they literally just saw it and left their camp. I mean, that's fair. I wouldn't hang around if I saw something. Oh, you wouldn't, like, chase the dog creature? I wouldn't hang around if I just saw an unsettling person standing around in the woods. Let alone a dog-headed creature. Like, man, that is not a chance. I'm out. So, another thing, though, is that this might not be the first sighting of the creature at all. Oh, okay. Interestingly enough, the Ojibwe tribe, a First Nations tribe that once lived in Michigan... Mm-hmm has legends about wolves that act like men. Interesting. And even a uh, a wolf god, which please forgive me on this, whose name is uh, Jibiyabus. Yeah, you probably did better than I would. Um, one of their myths even talks about their cultural hero, Nanabush, approaching a group of people 
In the myth, at first he thinks they're people, and as he approaches, they're actually wolves. He ends up camping with them, cooking with them, and even adopting a young one as his brother. Interesting. So, uh, do you think there's a little bit of a connection here? Uh, I mean, certainly it's the right region. Um, it's, it's certainly an interesting crossover. I would be... I, I'm curious as to how, because I know there's some um, Native American legends and stories about like, skinwalkers, about, you know, that actually pretty reasonably line up with European werewolf lore, uh, but with other animals too, I, I believe. I'd be curious, yes. do these line up with, do those stories from Michigan line up with, of course not, you know, different tribes have different, you know, legends and things, but I mean that, I'd be curious about connections between those. Uh, personally, I know more about Navajo and more uh, Southern based tribe. Yes. Myths. Yes. Kind of because, you know, my background is Hispanic. I right. look back at a lot more of like, Mayan and Southern tribes, but uh, more of the South. It yeah. doesn't really fit with Southern beliefs, no, because they're these are creatures who are wolf men. They don't change. People that change, yeah. It's it's that missing that change component again, which is very interesting, because um, that's such a core component to a lot of a lot of mythology. Not just even if we're talking about like, mm. werewolf or lycanthrope type things. Um, specifically the one that I was thinking about while writing this was the Navajos Yenodushi, or Skinwalker, yeah. which are shamans who need the skin of the animal to transform into them. Right, right. I, so that's that's a, the, my first thought, but yeah, it doesn't quite line up, which is very interesting. But it doesn't quite line up with European werewolf lore either. No. No, it doesn't. Which is all of that. Mm-hmm. But, uh... Sightings have still been going on, though. Hmm. And as things have been going on, they've been kind of moving away from their home state of Michigan. Which is interesting. I feel like that happens a lot with the more something is sighted, the more, like, widespread it gets. Which is actually uh, why we're going to be talking about encounters Instead of pop culture. Yeah, because I, I feel like today. this is not a thing that's gotten pop culture. So, some cryptids have, but I don't feel like this is one that's gotten its... I mean, it has a song, song. Jackie. Well, I'm sorry. Yes, of course, the song is They have a song. The poppiest of culture. But <laughs> the, the, uh, <laughs> the, like, poet's night spoken word poetry. Um, but, uh, yeah, otherwise, I don't think this has gotten a lot of... Uh, attention. So I'm very curious about these sightings and, and where these go. Well, cool. Are you ready to take this from Michigan to our home state of Ohio? Let's do it. Okay, the first sighting that we have is coming to us from uh, weekendweird.com. Okay. And this took place at Silver Creek in Norton, Ohio. Can't say Just for exactly. reference to you, because we live in Columbus, right. very generalized area. Yeah. Uh, but that's about an hour north of us and about an hour west of my hometown of Galleon. Okay, so more towards the, like, uh, south of Toledo kind of situation. Yeah, it's Bowling a little, Green, like, a little okay. southwest of uh, Sandusky. Okay, okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so I'm going to start just reading this freeform here. Yeah, let's do it. The, uh, the author of this is telling the story of their friend, all right? Okay. I don't care if you believe me or not. Was the serious, straightforward introduction that I was given to the possible Wolfman sighting in autumn of 2013. It was at this point that my longtime friend, Andrew, had told me not just one encounter, but two separate encounters with more than one strange bipedal creature out hunting game near Norton, Ohio. So, Andrew normally worked night shifts. He traveled frequently down darkened roads and everything in Ohio. But one cold autumn night in particular, while traveling down Johnson Road, bordering Silver Creek Metro Park, he saw something that was anything but routine. Approximately 50 yards from the intersection of Mandela Lane Road, he stopped his car with two or when two deer raced across the road heading south what caught his attention was what they were running from here's a direct quote from andrew 
I would place them somewhere between six foot six and seven foot tall. They chased the two deer, which were both similar, by the way, out across the street and into the woods. They ran in formation, one in front, two behind, kind of next to each other, and were roughly 30 to 40 yards behind the deer. They were bipedal, very muscular, and fast, lightning fast. It all happened in just a few seconds, and I couldn't describe any features, unfortunately. I'm assuming it was either a new moon or a cloudy, or cloudy because it was very dark. But they were definitely a dark color, maybe a chocolate brown or a black color. Interesting that he was able to tell they were bipedal. I'm assuming it's from the way that they were running. Uh, yeah, I guess if you see a, sh- even if you just see a shadow of something, you can usually tell an animal versus like something uprounding a person. So that's very interesting. Um, also, the very like hunting pack formation is intriguing. That's also kind of what interested me about this is the yeah. idea of them hunting together because. Mm-hmm. Especially about Bigfoot lore, whenever you have a Bigfoot sighting, they're always very solitary. Yeah, cr- cr- most cryptid sightings typically are extremely solitary, which is very, uh, which is very intriguing. Uh, but it's definitely one of those things where instantly, if you see something bipedal and it's not a human in North America, that's something to catch your eye. That's true. That would be an immediate, like, something isn't right. Because we don't have, you know, large primates running around or, or anything um, upright, so. It's true. And, like, even a bear, if you've seen a bear, they <laughs> shuffle on their back legs. They, they do not run. They can't full run. No, 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 no. Not at all. Okay, but less than a month later after this sighting, Andrew was heading home again on Johnson Road as he passed a moonlit cornfield. The field had full-grown corn stalks, but I don't know exactly the height. Only the corn stalks were taller than me by a head, and I'm six foot. This time, my sighting of two creatures was a quick flash because there was no open land to it. Hmm. They basically leapt the road as they broke the corn and landed about 10 to 15 feet into the field on the other side and kept running. This time, the pair I, that I saw in the moonlight, the first one was black and the second one more of a white or silver on its chest and back. Since the first three I saw were all solid color, that means this must have been... It, there must have been at least four in the area. Right. Interesting. That is a hell of a leap for one. Yeah, no, uh, 10 to 15 feet. Not yeah. only that, but out of corn stalks. Out of out of out of corn across the road in another ten and fifty feet. Yeah, we're talking like um like, tw- oh, like thirty foot jump at that point. Which is ridiculous. I don't think a single creature outside of like a kangaroo could maybe do that. Yeah, that's wild. Um Yeah, corn gets tall. That's <laughs> anyone anyone in Ohio can attest to that. Corn gets really, really tall. So, well, we used to, uh, my family used to have a field right out back of our uh, house and we'd rent that out to a bunch of different companies so that they could grow corn on it. That corn could definitely get eight foot tall. Oh, easily. 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 Yeah. I I mean, it depends on the time of year, but like when it's getting close to harvest, but yeah, no, we would, (laughs) there are around my hometown, there's so many lanes and things that become really dangerous to drive on when the corn gets tall because the corn goes right to the road. So yeah, I can I can definitely picture this like corridor of corn between two uh between two fields. So that would probably be around picture. September or October at that point too. Probably so. for the height, yeah. I I would guess. And yeah, something leaping out of that at high speeds. I'm not a fan of that. No, not at all. No. But those were Andrew's two encounters here in Ohio. Okay. Was uh that was twenty thirteen, right? Back in 2013. So semi-recently. I mean, we're only talking... I mean, technically eight now, but just at the eight. Yeah. Um, very interesting. So next up, we have a story from Reddit. From the okay. user Mr. Ballin. <laughs> Love it. And this took place in 2016. So getting okay. a little bit closer, too. Yeah, yeah. 
Not quite later. on that seven year mark though. No, I was thinking about that when he said twenty thirteen, so we're a little outside the every ten years on the seventh year situation from from our song. Mm-hmm. Uh let's see. Okay. First, I had never heard of the Dog Man until I posted in r slash ghost stories. Previous to finding out these sightings were called Dogmen, I had only thought to search for wolf-like creature. When I finally found out the correct name, I googled it and found a sighting of a story from Niagara Falls that had happened in the 1960s, which is about 30 minutes from me. The details were so similar to the experience that I had It felt like I had copied and pasted their experience. But I assure you, this is 100% truthful and a personal experience. I wouldn't have believed my ear, or wouldn't have believed my eyes if I'd been alone. Wouldn't have believed my ears. (laughs) Sometimes you can't. On July 19th, 2016, I remember the date because we had our annual Christmas in July at my in-laws, and it was a crazy full moon. We had left to head home, The time was approximately 11.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We took the back way. We lived in a somewhat rural area, so the way back is very dark. No traffic at the night, or at the time of night. And the speed limit was about 60 uh, 60 kph. So this is on the Canada side, by the way, Ontario. I was, my brain was suddenly like, close to Niagara Falls, so we're probably up in like Michigan. And then my brain was just like, where in the nowhere in the U.S. uses kilometers? Okay, so we're in the Canadian no. side of it. Gotcha, gotcha. We're we're in Ontario, Canada. Okay. Totally fine. As we're driving along, and about five minutes from our home, out of the corner of my eyes, towards the forest on the passenger side, I catch a glimpse of something moving fast. The moment my foot hits the brake, my wife grabs my legs, getting goosebumps as I type this because this is a crazy experience. We come to a screeching halt in the road, and whatever it was stopped dead in front of us, cocked its head to look at us. We both said at the same time, Do you see that? It was huge. Best guess, seven foot tall. Glowing yellow eyes from the headlights. And it was muscular and skinny at the same time. But the most memorable feature, though, were its legs. It 100% looked like a dog walking upright, with a cocked angle in its legs. No sooner did it stop and glare at us than it continued to bolt across the road and vanish into the forest on my driver's side. The only way we would have ever been able to describe it is werewolf-like. And like I said, my wife and me both agreed. If we had not both witnessed it, I'd called myself crazy and never mentioned again. But both of us saw it. interesting yeah definitely i always find it intriguing when it's it's two people see the same thing um yeah that that so it has like a um i honestly don't know the scientific term so like the i think like backwards knee uh thing that the dogs have i know it's not technically so technically it's not a backwards knee but their knee is actually up higher right and it has the ankle joint yeah where so, dogs usually have their ankle. So it's got that weird dog leg situation. Okay. Yeah, so it had that, like, quadrupedal back leg. Right, right, right. Despite being on two legs. Mm-hmm. Now it seems like a bitch for that. Like, it seems hard. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's that's another... Yeah, that's, that's another... The, the pair of people makes it intriguing. It makes it a lot weirder to have two... Mm-hmm. Very much so. And I've got one last encounter for us because we're going a little bit closer to us each uh, <laughs> each time. Got it. Yeah. But uh, we've got a final report from Reddit from user Queen Lizzie Twenty Two. Got out my laptop for this one. Sorry in advance for long posts. I'm excited, and a million thoughts are going through my head. I don't want to forget any detail. I've been on this sub for a long time, commenting here, and there are. Uh, here and there, and fascinated with Dogman, Bigfoot, anything paranormal. Thanks to losing my job to COVID, I've been spending a lot of time reading and researching interesting topics. Uh, Never knew that one of my friends actually saw two of them. So my friend, 
we'll call her Jay, was over last night, and we had been talking about paranormal experiences. And I brought up the subject of the Dog Man. She'd never heard of Dog Man, so I put up a YouTube, put on YouTube, and showed her Scott Carpenter's videos, and then remembered the video where an unknown creature was filmed digging in a cemetery, which is another thing I can link down below here. When I saw the creature in that video, she gasped and said, Oh my god, I wonder if that's what I saw. <laughs> I paused it and was like, What? Excuse me? You've seen, you've seen something like this and you've never told me? She said she had basically seen two werewolves about five years ago on her property. So this is again around that time in between the other two sightings. Mm-hmm. That'd make it 2015 then, yeah, roughly. Mm -hmm. I asked her to tell me every detail, and I was careful to ask questions to not lead her on in any way, since I had listened to every single Dogman Encounter episode. I'm familiar with, with, I'm familiar with what most witnesses see, and lo and behold, every answer she gave matched the others that I've heard. The location? Leonard, Michigan. A pretty rural area with lots of woods and wildlife. Her and her family have a few acres and raise chickens and ducks as a hobby. Her house is on a dirt road and surrounded by woods in a nearby area. This was about five years ago, when my dog was a young puppy. My sister and I took her outside to go potty, and it was dusk, getting dark, but still plenty of light to see. The pup noticed something and started to slowly walk towards it. We looked to see what it she was seeing, and to our shock, there were two huge dog slash wolves on our property about a hundred feet away from where we were standing on the porch instinctively i took a few steps forward scooped up my puppy my sister and i stared at them they were on all fours they were hunched over and eating something they lifted their heads to look at us but seemed unbothered and went back to whatever they were eating my first thought was i was curious what the heck we were looking at and I wanted to go closer to see. But that thought was replaced by the realization that this was not safe. I slowly walked backwards, so did my sister, and we went back inside. We locked the doors and windows and asked each other what the hell those things are. We watched them from the window and eventually left, in no apparent hurry. I kind of put that experience out of my mind and almost forgot about it until now. So Queen Lizzie asks her, Did you feel scared or threatened? Not necessarily because of the size and how wrong they looked. I felt like they could be dangerous, but they never snarled or showed teeth or did anything aggressive to scare us. How was the puppy acting? She was probably too young to realize that they could be dangerous. She seemed just curious. The most interesting thing to me, though, is that they match the color. One was dark color, maybe black. The other one was a lighter color, a light brown or a tan. They were bigger than the dogs we know exist, bigger than a mastiff, even. And they were up on their hind feet. They would definitely be much taller than you and I, probably about seven feet tall. Um, what did their tails look like? She paused for a short while, and I could see her thinking. And then she got a realization. They didn't have tails. That was what really scared me. When they walked away, I remembered thinking they don't have tails. Interesting. Uh, at any point in that, does she ask what they were eating? At no point does she ask what they were eating. I'm assuming it was out of sight during this. Probably, yeah. Um, that is interesting. And, and a lot of the times, there's the stories about like things out in the middle of nowhere. And of course, people out in the middle of nowhere see things. But I almost... You know, you can also think of that in the way of, like, if people live out in the middle of, of nowhere, they're probably used to it. And therefore, it's it's alarming when they have something that scares them. It really them. is. <laughs> uh, like I was saying, I used to live out on a farm. We used to have coyotes yeah. and, like, groundhogs and all sorts of animals that are larger just kind of walking through. Right, right, right. And 
even when like a coyote walked out in the middle of like our yard, I was never alarmed by it. Mm-hmm. You, right, and so it's if it's something did catch your attention and did alarm you, that would be something that stood out. So I, I do find that interesting about um, these sorts of sightings. Uh, very interesting. I actually did just find something kind of buried in a paragraph here. Um, they had found the area where the creatures were eating, but they only found large oh, okay. canine paw prints. No uh, evidence of what they had eaten at all. Possibly dragging yeah. it off. Dragging it off, or in some canine cases, actually just devouring at bones and all. Also, also possible, yeah. There are some that can do that. Interesting. Very interesting. So I'm just going to put a put a close on this for our uh yeah for our sightings here so what do you think about this cryptid um it's definitely unique from a lot of like werewolf lore um which i find interesting it's it's less of like the person becoming a thing and more of like this is just a canine thing whatever it is um I, I think in some cases, and a lot of people like skeptics would probably go, oh, well, you know, big wolf. And I think that works to a point. But the, the like we talked about earlier, if you, like when it was the, the running across thing, if you see something bipedal, even if you see a quick shadow run by, there's a difference. And I feel like you can spot that difference. Um, I have other just questions that, aren't really going to be answered like with the um the husband and wife situation like they were at a party were they drinking those kind mm-hmm. of common questions i certainly hope not because they were driving yeah. home but you know i hope not but there's like there's those questions that i that i i like to you know at least entertain but it is definitely interesting and and that was all bulked in a relatively similar area over the course of three four years yeah that was 2013 Um, to 2016 yeah which is worth that's definitely worth you know taking a look at i'd be curious if there were other stories from those areas but i mean we're talking ohio canada and michigan but like the southern part of canada obviously we're close to my falls yeah yeah very interesting creature i think it's definitely one that i want to look into a little more at some point Maybe see yeah. if we can get more uh, more reports of sightings. Yeah, because I feel like it's one that doesn't get explored. Because I've not really heard of it, um, even from those sightings. So I feel like it's not super explored. It's it's once again, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people, even if they've seen something like that, probably just in their heads chalk it up to, oh, it's a wolf. I just thought of something, uh, too. Uh, Wisconsin, I believe, has its own dog-like, like, werewolf creature as well. Very close to mm-hmm. Michigan. Called the, uh, the Beast of Bray Road. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I have heard about that in a couple places, really. So yes, I wonder if that could true. be the same creature. Could loop that in. It, it, it'd be worth comparing the lore, but we don't have, uh time in this episode to do that but definitely something to work look into in the future uh and really quickly just before we end it i'm going to note that there are a couple f- like pop culture references to the dog man oh, cool. um, of course one of them being the song that we listen to the lovely uh, song if you haven't yes. already take a yes. listen just because it's a vibe it's an exper. it's an experience <laughs> there is also a michigan dog man movie it is not that good but if you want more michigan dog man <laughs> it is there <laughs> if you need more michigan dog man in your life it exists that's right so thank you so much for joining us today yes, it's been a lot you. of fun jackie for sure yeah, thank you for this very interesting new cryptid that I yeah. didn't know about. And we will see everyone again in the next one. Uh, let us know what sorts of creatures you want to hear about. Um, along with that, feel free to like and subscribe. Check back for more monsters. We'll see you next Bye-bye. Time.